Hello, in this video we will learn to organize our file and then apply attributes and then we will use part list to generate BOQ, BOM, hardware list etc. So let us start by giving a family to the new parts we created. Now if you see in your project tree at the left hand side all the parts are not having a group. So by the family I mean to give a main group. And for that, we'll go in the attributes dialog from the top icon bar. And here you can see a separate dialog for the groups. And then I'll select group parts. For the selection, I will just select all of the parts and I click my middle mouse button to confirm. And here it's asking to give a name. So the name will be chest of two drawers. And now you can see in the project tree there is a good hierarchy and we see one group and then there are different parts. And the next thing we have to do is name the new bonds here. So if you see all the parts are named like block. So this will be same reflected in our cutting list. Now to make it look organized we will have to give a name to each part. So I'll go to the part names in my attributes dialog. And in the input bar, it's asking to select the part which I want to name. So I'll select the left hand side and I click my middle mouse button. And now there is another input bar open here, which is asking to give the name. So here I'll type end LX. Now the system is asking me to name more parts. But if you see there are a lot of parts and you might come across in a project where there are might be 100 parts. So it's not possible to select each part and name it. It would be time consuming. And if you are going to type your names every time, then the list might look very shabby because the part names would differ every time. Like today I'm typing an LH tomorrow. I would might be type site LH. So to make a standard list, I would recommend that you use a function name from list. Now when I click name from list, the system is again asking me to select the parts which I want to name. The only difference here is when I click my middle mouse button after selection, it opens a list. Now I can have a predefined names here so that my names are always standard. And even if you have 20 of your colleagues working in the company, you all can use the same name list. So the drawing would look same to the guys who are on the shop floor or maybe in your accounts team. I want to give a name of a top here which is not there in my standard list. So I can create my own name and then I can type in here as top and I can say OK. So the name list you see here is like you have to create it only once and then you can use that names forever. And I have made your life easier and created a name list for you, which you can download it from the link in the description. And I will show you how to integrate this name list after you download it. Once you download the file from the link in the description, you should get a notepad file. And this is a simple TXT file which you can modify. So it has all the standard names what I made. And we are going to copy this thing in this path. This is Python's default system folder path. So we are going to replace the default file with the new one we created. So I'll copy this path and I'll go in my file explorer and paste it in my address bar. So you should see all the default files here. And I'll just copy this thing and replace the original file. Once you do this, you will have to restart your Python for the changes to reflect. So I have reopened my file and now you can go to attributes again, go to name from list. And now you can see that you have your complete list here. So now if I have to name my drawer fronts, I will just press D on my keyboard and I will press it again. So it will bring me to my drawer fascia and I confirm with my enter button on the keyboard. So it got a name and now I'm quite tired. So I will just finish off my coffee and be right back. So I'll click on my coffee break button. See you. The coffee was strong enough to keep me up and make another video after this. 
So the coffee break function is just like you saving the file, but it is a quick way to do it. So even if you shut down your Python and have a quick break, and let's say you start a new file and you just click on the coffee command again. So you have your file back from the Python's own storage system. So you don't have to select the folder and save it. Let us go back to attributes and go to name from list. And now the input bar is asking to select the part which I want to name. But the problem is I forgot after having the coffee which parts were named last. And for that reason, if you forget, maybe you have 200 parts in your file and you don't remember which parts were named or which you want to name it now. So you can just put question mark instead of selecting. Now the moment you put a question mark, the system will highlight the part which are not named. So before I confirm my question mark command, I will just make it transparent so that I can see which parts are highlighted. And now you can see your rail is not having a name. So I'll just press R on my keyboard and I press enter and I press R again and enter. And now there is a back. So I press B and enter and T and enter. And this is my skirting. So I press S skirting again. And this is my drawer bottom. So I have to press D and I come to my D bottom. This is my travel pack and this is my D side. So I finished naming all of the parts and now system is saying that all the parts have a name. So if you go to the name from list again and instead of selecting the part, you say question mark and now the system will say all the parts have name. So your group tree now looks much organized and if you want you can make some more subgroups and keep it more organized. So for that I will go back to attributes dialog and I say I want to group it and now I go in my front view. So I can say all of this should be in a group called as drawer1 and this will be let's say our drawer2. So now we are left with just the cabinet and now you can right click on your viewport and say make invisible. I don't want to see my drawer 1 and drawer 2. So what is left out is just the cabinet and now I go in my side view and I say group parts and this time I select only my carcass part. So I will name it as carcass and I say make invisible and what we are left is only the front part so I go to group again and I put in the group name as fronts now this is something which is not very important but it would make your life easier and now I can just right click and I say all the parts should be visible so our project tree now looks much organized where you can see there is a chest of drawer which has a carcass and in the carcass there are this many parts then we have a drawer one drawer two and then there is a separate group for the hardware inside okay perfect and now i'll just turn off my tree so we finished off giving the group and a name but there could be multiple attributes so attributes are just information which you attach to a part and then you can call that information in your part list. So that can be anything. Maybe you want to put an article code, a vendor code, a material color or maybe a face coating. So if you go to attributes dialog, there are multiple attributes which you can assign. Now next I would like to assign is let's say a core material. So I can click on my core material and the core material is supposed to be same for most of the materials here. So instead of selecting parts one by one, what I can do is I can say equal thickness and I click just one of the parts. So all are selected and this could be 
in particle board so in the core material dialog below in the input bar i say this is my particle board and then i say equal thickness again and i click one of the drawer side so all the drawer sides having a 16 mm thickness are selected i confirm with my minimal mouse button and i say this is of mdf let's say and finally i give core material to my back I confirm with middle mouse and I say this is my battle light. So we have assigned core material to all of our parts. Same way you can go to article number and then you can put a description. Maybe you put a construction type or if you don't find an attributes which you want, then you can see below there are user defined attributes and you can change the label of this. For that, you can go to attributes in the top ribbon and you can click on own names for attributes and you can change it to maybe vendor code so if you are ordering multiple parts from different vendors so you can just assign a code to it this would help you make a filter now this is also a tedious job like you have to define a name first and then you go for a code material and then you have to give a vendor code so it's like too many repeated tasks you have to do now a simple thing for that you can just go to attributes dialog and there is something called as material palette so in the material palette you will have all the attributes defined at once and you can make your own list of material palette so i would create just one year and let's say i would name it as 18 mm underscore particle port underscore both side laminate and i'll say this should have an article number as bsl underscore high gloss and the description is like the company name i would say it's from marino and i say the core material is particle board and there is no hatching I can also apply material but we will put it from a separate dialog and here I can say like there is a face coating and it is on all sides because it is a both side laminate material so here I can say face coating is of a veneer and if there is an edge banding I can turn it on but we learn more about edge banding when we do the workshop part so I can protect this and I can save it and now if I have to apply all of these attributes will come at once to whichever part I apply. So it's saying that material palette has been changed. Do you want to override? We say yes. And now we have a set of filter open to select the parts. So instead of selecting from this filter, I can also just directly now say all of my carcass should have this material. Okay so in one click all of these attributes are applied now there is another way of doing the same thing which is much better and advanced way so if you see in the icon bar we have a material menu so i will go in my material menu and i can assign some standard material which python provides you with the installation file and i say i want to assign material to the parts which are having equal thicknesses and I select all of it together. So my whole cabinet with 18 mm parts is selected. Now, when you confirm with your middle mouse button, you might not see this file because I had opened it once and the path is remembered here. So in your case, if it is a fresh installation, you have to go to browse and you have to open this material file in this exact path. Okay, so it will be always in this path if you have installed Python version 25 and I open my file and now here you can apply any of the material so in this case I will use walnut you can also search here in your search bar and then I select my walnut material and you can see a preview as well so if I make it solid and I move it aside then you can just put any material let's say oak and you just click so you can see a quick preview before application so i will stick to my walnut material and i select it i confirm with my ok button so now the material has been applied now whilst i apply a material 
I could also pass on all of the attributes which I gave one by one. So for that you will have to create your own material file or else you can edit the default material file as well. So let us go back to materials menu and here you can see edit material file. So I click here and I select my default material file and I double click on it. So it opens the dialog and let's say I'll go back to my walnut material. I right click on this and I say I want to edit. This takes me to the edit material mode dialog and here you will see all the parameters which can be edited and the top right side you will see the attributes dialog. So you can pass on some attributes here as well. So I will put VSL underscore high gloss and in the description I put Merino. You can put a price, you can put a core material or you can put your newly defined button of vendor code. So you can also save some attributes with the material as well. So like there are multiple ways of doing it and I confirm with my OK button. So whenever if you apply this material, all of the attributes will come at once. So your repeated tasks can all be done at once by assigning a material having attributes or you can go to material palette and give all the attributes at once. And now we'll see this drawing in a list format with all the attributes we have assigned. So for that you have to go in your horizontal icon bar and in the parts list menu. And the moment you click on the part list menu, it is asking which part should be passed on. So I'll say all of this part should be reflected in my list. And here I see the list with names and quantity. And now I can just click on one of the headers and I can say insert a column to the right hand side. And here I can select which attributes I wish to see. So I applied article number. This is what I would like to see here. And you can see wherever we apply the article number, it's visible. And then I can again right click here and I can say I want to see my core material. So we see the core material wherever we applied. And I can right click again and I can add some more information to my list which I want. So I can say I want to see the dimensions 1 and I can call it as L1 which is the longest dimension. And I can call another dimension here our second longest dimension so that is L2 and now I can say I want to see L3 as well which is our last dimension that is thickness. Now this was a simple parts list we created and if you see we have some unwanted objects like 3D text which should not be there in our list so you can go to your setup in the right hand side and here you can say that I don't wish to see edge parts so you can just exclude it and you can also choose to not see the group tree and just the list of items or you can just say I want to see the group tree as well and because you made all the efforts to create this part list you can save your effort as a template so I can say save this thing as a template and I name it as parts list and I'll save it on my desktop. So next time when you make some other drawing like a wardrobe or a bed and you want to have the list in the same format so you can just load the template. So let us make another list by using our template so I'll click next to my list one and now I say this time I just want to make the list of my drawer internals. So I select both the drawers from my group tree I confirm with my middle mouse and now the system is asking do you want to make an empty list or you wish to load a default template or maybe select the template. So I say I wish to select a template which I saved earlier and now when you click you get your own template but with different items what you selected. You can also choose to make your both the list as always to be default. So I click on make my all of my list as default. So next time when you start Python with a new item, this two list will always be loaded with this template. Now once you have your list ready with the correct template, then you can export it. And the moment you click on export, you get an option to select all of these file formats. 
so I'll save it as of now in my Excel format you can also change the positions of your column like you can just long press left mouse button and drag this column to the right hand side or you can just move it to the extreme left and bring the quantity in front so this was from my side today in the next video we will learn more about creating your own material and making a decent rendering